All right, well, first I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's uh, able to attend today. Um, I know we threw this uh, birds and feather together in the last few weeks, and it seemed like there was a lot of interest in um, discussing the uh, migration from um, Malete to, to the Lessons tool, which is now the officially supported uh, modules tool in Sakai. Um, so I put together an agenda, as you can see here on the, the front page. I was hoping that we could just really quickly go through roll call and see the different types of schools that are in attendance. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Uh, and then I want to review the uh, pre-assessment results, which um, many of you shared with me um, via the, um, the Google form. Uh, and then I want to jump right into um, an open discussion. Um, hopefully, um, we can get a lot of participation in talking about uh, best practices and whatnot. All right. So um, if, if we don't mind, can we just have, um, I guess, one by one? I'm going to start, to, if you look at the list on the left, um, if you could um, sound out and let us know um, where you're from. Uh, I guess we have Andrew Green. Okay, he might be in listen-only mode. Um, Beth Kiggins. Yes, uh, I'm with the University of Annapolis, and we have transitioned several courses from um, Elite to Lessons. Thank you. All right, we have Brandon. Um, Brandon, where are you from? All right, Brandon's in listen-only mode. Christina Schweibert. I'm from Northwest State Community College in Ohio. And we just finished um, converting to lessons. This past summer was the first semester with Malite turned off completely. Well, thank you for joining. That's going to be a big help. I know I asked for a few schools that had already migrated to, to join us today. So that's very helpful. Thank you. Um, let's see here. We have Corey Nicoletti. Hi, Corey Nicoletti from Marist College. Marist, hello. Welcome. All right, and Dave Malone. Um, Dave is actually uh, from FITM with Samantha, Irwin, and Divine. We're at FITM um, in Los Angeles. Thank you. No problem. All right, we have, uh, let's see, down the list, and uh, Dee Dee. Hi, I'm Dee Dee Hurricane from Marist College. I'm with uh, Corey Nicoletti and Louisa Lee. And we're in the midst of doing that changeover. So there's a lot of lessons to be learned here. Thank you. All right, let's see, go down the list. Let's see who we didn't get here. Uh, Gwen? Gwen Morrell? All right, she may be in listen only mode. Let's see here. Jennifer's from Walsh. We have that. Louisa from Marist. Matt J. Okay. All right, Matt Jay is in muted mic. Uh, and then I have Paul Walsh from the University of Baltimore. Reba Ann Lee. All right, and I see Sal Khan from Texas State. Reba's right. from Marist as well. Reba's Marist, thank you. All right, so we have a um, very uh, diverse institution population here. Some um, smaller schools and we have a few larger schools here. Um, I want to go ahead and jump into the next slide, um, which is the um, talk a little bit about the pre-assessment. I just threw together a, a few questions um, last Friday and uh, several of the schools were kind enough to, uh, um, to participate. And you can see the list of schools there. Um, what I wanted to do is just highlight um, some of the, uh, you know, the question about what I asked, but what did you hope to get out of this session? Um, so it looks like some people wanted to provide us with feedback, which is very nice. Um, and then most of the rest of us were looking for shortcuts and best practices for doing it more easily than cutting and pasting. Um, people, I think, wanted to discuss, uh, University of Baltimore included, um, any ideas on automation. Um, and um, we're looking for tips and tricks for doing conversions. Um, the other questions we asked were basically, to get a, an idea of um, the number of courses um, people are working with. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. So we had. Looks like we have a, a varying sample size here of um, 
you know, we have a few larger institutions and a few uh, institutions that um, have um, less than 250 um, total courses that they're um, using with Malete in the fall. Um, and then we have here, um, looks like a, a number of schools are looking to migrate to lessons within the next um, 12 to 24 months. Uh, and let's see here. This was an interesting one, the responsibility um, for course conversion. So it looks like a number of schools, actually the instructional technology staff uh, assists with the, um, the the migration of uh, course content, which is what, what we do here at the University of Baltimore. Um, and then there were a couple schools where the faculty migrate their own content. And the last question was, how many courses in total will you be migrating um, to lessons? And we had a varying amount there as well. Um, one school over a thousand or more. I think that may have been Marist, if I recall. Uh, and then the number of them anywhere between um, one and a thousand. All right, so getting back to the agenda. Um, I want to uh, start by, um, I guess, opening up the floor um, and let's start an open dialogue about um, the best practices for migrating from elite to lessons. And I'm really hoping in this, um, in the next 10 minutes, we can um, hear from those schools that have, are joining us today that have already migrated. Um, I think that's going to be really helpful for the rest of the uh, people listening in to hear from um, some schools that have already done this, to hear some of the best practices. So I'm going to open the floor now. Oh, don't all jump in at once. <laughs> well, which schools have stated that they've actually completed or gotten a large chunk of this done yet? This is Dee from Marist. Let's see here. Christina, we we've done um, the vast majority of ours. There's a few that aren't converted yet that aren't going to run again until probably spring that haven't been converted yet. But most of ours are. And we had our faculty convert their own with a little assistance from me, um, mostly because I'm a department of one, so I could not convert um, about 200 to 250 courses. Um, the main guideline I gave them was to try to make the lessons page look like the same sort of weekly agenda they might hand out in a face-to-face -face class. You know, have some text at the top, title, objectives, links to the readings, links to the assignments, and just go from there. So, Christina, you're saying you made it a layout page for them to follow, like a template? I gave them a, I converted a couple classes that I gave them as an, that I let people see as an example. Um, we've got a few where they really just threw links on the page and I'm gently nudging them to improve it. But most of them, once they saw um, an ideal lesson page, it worked pretty well. Would you mind sharing that with the group? What you, what you, would it look like? It's just curious. Um, a screenshot or something? Yeah, let me see if I can get one. But uh, if not, I'll send it out through the mailing list afterwards. That'd be great. Thank you. But the one thing we did that I was actually very happy with is we sort of enforced a deadline for when it had to be done. So we actually, um, we have Longsight as our hosting Writer, and we just had them stealth the Malete tool um, before we opened up summer classes. So the instructors could not put that tool into any future classes. Mm -hmm. So they, they had to go to lessons or not have it online. Wow, dead stop. Cool. Sometimes it's the only way to actually enforce the rules. Otherwise, if we made it optional, We'd probably be still having Malete five years from now. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is Beth with the University of Indianapolis, and we pretty much did the same thing um, she did. We're also with Longsight. Our faculty have actually until this Friday to transfer the content from Malete to Lessons. And we did a combination of faculty doing, doing their own, as well as our uh, instructional technology design staff helping them or doing it for them and have used it as an opportunity to help the faculty redesign their courses versus, as you said, just throw a bunch of links up there 
for the students to access. And we also gave them when they wanted it or tried to encourage them to use a template to work from so we could make sure they put their description, learning objectives, readings, et cetera, out there versus just a set of links. That's cool, Beth. All right, is there anyone else out there who'd like to share their experiences in, um, in migrating content? Okay. Well, go ahead. Hello. Hello. Go. Hi, it's Andrew from uh, HUC. Um, we we are a very small department of three people with a couple of online part-time support, and we do it for our faculty. So I would say uh, there's a couple of different schools and um, certificate programs that we've already moved a bunch of stuff over from the Let Data Lessons, but we do it ourselves and don't really have any input from the faculty. They just kind of give us their stuff. They gave us their stuff originally for modules, and now we've refashioned it. Um, one of the big um, issues is just the navigation is so different in Lesson Builder that um, we had to come up with a different strategy for how students move through the courses. So essentially, we start with one kind of navigation page, and then each module is built as a sub-page button on that page and gradually revealed throughout the semester. Thank you, Andrew. So now I guess Christina, Beth, and Andrew, in terms of the migration itself, is, is, is it a majority of um, copying and pasting um, the HTML content from, um, from I guess, one text box to, um, you know, a similar construct in, in lessons? Is that pretty much the, um, the strategy that, that was uh, employed? Uh, yeah, for the most part, with the exception of um, some items that are embedded um, especially images. Images are just handled differently. So um, a lot of images just had to be re-imported to sites and then um, added to lesson pages, like manually. And we did the same thing. It was a lot of copying and paste. Uh, the most time-consuming part was when faculty had linked to documents articles, whatever, directly within Melite, and then they had to be downloaded and uploaded to resources, and then the links recreated. Well, most of our faculty had the links and files uploaded into Melite, so ours was a lot of downloading and then putting all those links together on one page and making it look pretty. Hi, this is Louisa from Marys College. Uh, we're just doing the migration right now. Um, we tried different ways to uh, import the content from Melati to lessons, but eventually we um, figured that the easiest way is still the old-fashioned copy and paste. Um, I, I know on the agenda, but we will talk about the using IMS later, um, but this is something I have to throw out right here. We tried IMS importing and exporting, uh, didn't really work that well because the format is really um, not what exactly the faculty wants. Uh, it converts all the text into HTML. It creates um, another folder in the resources, so kind of mess up the organization of the whole uh, resources folders. A couple other things. Um, so eventually we are doing copy and paste, but we yet to hear from the faculty, so what they think about this copy and paste. Yeah, that's where we are right now. And Louisa, you have, I think, you uh, you have a lot of courses, right? Are you the institution that had a thousand or more total courses? Um, that's the estimate, yeah. So that's a lot of, uh, so are you, uh, how are you going about that, I guess, with the, with the thousand? Are you doing it um, like a college at a time, or are you empowering the faculty to do it themselves? Are you assisting? Um, Riva, you want to talk about this, or I can? Just quickly, I wouldn't mind hearing, since you have, you know, yes. you have the most um, courses, I think, of anybody here, at least yeah, that I heard. We, we built up a timeline. Uh, we will 
uh, phase out the malady uh, by the next upgrade in next summer 2016. So we build up a timeline. So by the end of this year, uh, the malady will be after the end of this year, December the first. Uh, malady will be uh, what we call uh, view only mode. So the faculty are recommended to transfer the content from Malati to lessons by the end of this year. The next year, spring, um, it's view only for faculty. Students cannot see it. So students can still transfer content. Um, but if they want to use it for students in next spring, they have to do it. So we create this timeline. And we set up all kinds of uh, workshops and open labs, and hopefully they will attend. And if they call, we definitely will help them on specific needs and see what happens. So, so we're kind of uh, a little bit anxious to see what's happening. Well, thank you very much for that. That, yeah. that is very helpful. That is helpful. No, and I like that um, the idea of actually, you know, in terms of phasing it out, making it um, faculty only, view only. Um, that's a very, um, that's a nice strategy. I like that. Okay. Yeah, we also met with all those uh, online program chairs and uh, pro, uh, program leaders and led them to be the point of contact to reach out to all the uh, specific uh, faculty as instructors of these courses. Um, so we try to trickle down the line and try to reach as many people as possible. Yeah, we definitely send out numerous announcements and uh, uh, emails to try to reach everybody. Okay, well, we see a question here. In the copy and paste process, did you combine lesson sections? In the single lesson page, or did you make each melody section into a unique lessons page? That's a great question, Salva. Um, you know, we definitely have these two different way of organizing your content. Um, but I think for the new beginner users of lessons, we think to keep everything on one page is easier for them. So what we recommend is to uh, get one main lessons page then create multiple subpages, uh, which will correspond to the modules in Maleti, so they will feel more familiar with it. Uh, when they are uh, using lessons, become more familiar with lessons, then we'll uh, help them to redesign the course. Maybe they would like to have many top-level lessons pages, but that's down the line. All right, thank you very much for that. Uh, does anyone else have any other um, feedback in terms of um, migration, um, the manual migration process before we move open, over to the, um, the next part of the agenda, number four? OK, well, let me go ahead. I, I want to start. Um, I'll start uh, number four off by just telling you a little bit about our experience. Uh, a few years ago, we, we took a look at the lesson, the tool when it was still called Lesson Builder. And you know we took took a look at the um, Malete export and the then current um, lessons import, and we found that they you know they were very incompatible, uh, like Luisa was saying, uh, in terms of the um, the IMS spec. And so you know we actually approached Longsight back in I want to say this was in 2013, and. Actually, give me one second. I have to mute somebody here. Somebody's typing in. There we go. Sorry. Um, and we we engaged Longsight and actually had them spec out the the draft of um, an import tool for lessons that would be slightly uh, more sophisticated and and able to handle um, the Malete IMS um, export file, which was in um, common cartridge format. I believe uh, alongside the time was calling it CP format, which is slightly different than the CC format. I guess the way that the manifest is written, um, I'm not all that much into the technical specs of it. Either way, we engaged them and we spent a little bit of money and they kicked the ball a little bit down the road. Um, they definitely thought it was feasible to be able to get more of the content um, the way Maletti handles it. Um, 
you know, get it exported it in a way that um, lessons could accept it. So um, there we go. Matt J just built in here. CP is an earlier IMS format content packaging, right? And so that was actually the um, that was the spec that they were they were considering using because um, it seemed like it, it it may work better with the then current um, lessons import process. Um, so well, at the time, it was, at the time and currently, it's it's because. Um Malete only can export CP because it's and they never implemented a common cartridge. Common cartridge is like newer version of content packaging. So that that's uh, that was the issue. It was either implement content common cartridge for Malete or implement content packaging in lessons. That's right. And this is Matt Jones, right? That's the J. Okay. The Matt, yeah. and there's Matt, the guy who was doing it for us. So so we we got the ball a little bit down the road. Um, we knew that um, we we could develop something and then. Basically, we, we had a shift focus. We weren't ready for lessons at the time. We um, ran out of money. A lot of things happened. And so, anyways, we, we basically stalled that project. And now we, here we are, fast forward to 2015. And we are now um, taking a, a much more serious look at lessons. We, we know we want to move to the, you know, the tool that's supported by the Sakai community. I'm, I'm sure that's where um, most of the other people on this call who have not yet migrated there, they find themselves in the same position of, you know, do we continue to use a now unsupported Malete? Um, you know, how long can we continue to use it? How long will it still work? Uh, and then, um, you know, the flip side of that, you know, it seems like there's a lot of support in the community for lessons. There's a lot of active conversations going on, uh, you know, and we want to be part of those. So um, at this point, I want to, I guess, open up the, the floor. And, and I guess, does anyone want to start this off by um, talking about any experience you have with the export and import process, any, any um, fiddling you may have done, any ideas you have? Uh, this is Luisa again from Marist College. I could only speak from our testing experience, uh, how we decide not to recommend it. Um, so when you click the import, uh, sorry, first you click the export in Maleti. Uh, and what you get is a zipped file that's a package. Then you go to the lessons and click import and upload that zipped package. So what you get is uh, multiple pages uh, if you have multiple modules in the Maleti. And then each of these modules will create separate folders in the resources. And they are named different things. Um, so if you are not comfortable with the title, you can go there and change it. So interestingly, that doesn't break the link. Uh, pretty interesting. I don't know um, what the theory behind that, but it doesn't break the link. Uh, then when you look at the content in lessons, uh, it's, if it's originally text information, uh, it's converted into a HTML object, so it's a link. You click the link, go there, and you see all the text in there. It's just a plain HTML page. It doesn't have formatting. And then if you have a linked document in the resources, the link is still there. Um, so th these are the two major um, objects that the, uh, people usually have in the Maleti. So that's the two major things we tested. Um, so if you have other things, for example, you have images, it will look a little bit awkward and you have to relink them. Um, so pretty interesting. So um, from the student perspective, it's difficult to look at because if it's a text information, you have to click on the HTML and go there and look. Um, so we decide that if uh, this, if there are a lot of things that the faculty need to convert from Maleti to lessons, this is uh, this would be the last resort that we give them. So, for example, you know, uh, very late next year, in April or May, they need to save their uh, they need to save their content uh, from disappearing in the system. So we give them um, this method, so you can import and export to save your content. Um, but uh, to reorganize them, you need to work on it by yourself. Um, 
it, uh, because this uh, importing method, it also creates another problem. So if you want to use the lessons tool in the same site, in the old site, you cannot. Because when you uh, import that package into lessons, it creates the uh, a, another set of folders in the resources. It totally mess up the resources. So you need to create a new site uh, and import the package. So we didn't think that was uh, very um, uh, um, doable because there will be tons and thousands of, uh, if not thousands, hundreds of sites to be created, master sites, to save those files. So uh, we just use it as a last resort. OK, I'm just going to jump in here. We've actually had a lot of, um, of chatting going on here on the side, and, and I've been told that I need to read that uh, so it gets captured in the recording. Um, I want to start by jumping in with uh, Sawa had a question about um, Malete developers. Are the original Malete developers supporting the tool outside the Sakai community? Um, I'll go ahead and take a stab at that. Uh, my understanding is from um, from what Longside has told me is is no that they actually haven't actively updated um, the, the the code in, in quite some time. And um, I believe even the last release when we were we're on Sakai 293 right now, and um, I believe that um, Longsight may have had to do something in order to just you know port it to make make it work in that version. Um, I don't think that uh, I don't think that um, well, the developers I can't remember the name of the company yeah. Etudes I believe I don't think that they're actively supporting it. I commented to that point. There hasn't been any commits in nearly a year. And their 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 bug tracker is private, and you know their agenda and what they plan on doing is unknown to anybody. They don't like attend the conferences or anything, so nobody knows what what their plan for anything is, except them. <laughs> it's, that's a little bit scary. I think one of the questions that came up in our own internal um, meeting here at UB was over um, you know the new skinning with Morpheus. And um, I guess who was going to pick up, you know, if we were to even attempt to, you know, continue using Malete in Sakai 11, uh, you know, who would be responsible for picking up the work and making sure that that uh, worked inside the, um, you know, the uh, inside the new UI? Yeah, it, it would work. You know, like Morpheus allows you to still keep certain tools in iframe, so they work like they used to, but they're not going to look good. They're just going to look like they used to. So. They'll be like new, all the tools that got updated that are supported are gonna like look and feel better. They're gonna have a better, you know, flow with all the, everything else. But you will drop something like Malete in there, it'll look like it used to. So that's how I think a uh, evaluation I think might also work like that too, since evaluation doesn't get very much support. So there'll be a couple of tools that will work, but they just won't look good. So I mean, obviously, that doesn't sound very appealing. I think to any of us, um, the uh, like, I guess the uh, the unknown, you know, the unknown support, um, unknown what it's going to look like. I mean, there's there's a few good reasons um, to at least have a plan to um, to move away um, from Malete. I mean, I'm going back through the chat here. Um, I, I want to um, read Beth's remark. She said that she agreed with Louisa that one of the downsides of lessons is that the faculty upload files directly into lessons, Sakai creates a folder with the name of the lesson in the resource in the resources area to house those files and a list of folders uh, created in resources can, can be unwieldy. Um, and, and we've had that similar experience here in, in some of our testing. Um, and, and I don't know if, if any of you want to speak to that, but I, I think that's also one of the challenges in migrating is how to organize lessons, the, the lesson structure in the resources area. And, and even, I guess there's, you know, a dichotomy in, in how you want to present <laughs> lessons, whether as a um, a single tool with multiple um, subpages or as um, just multiple instances of the lesson tool for each module. Um, does anyone want to speak to that? Uh, I've been working with lessons for a while now. I still cannot really tell. Uh, when the, uh, the resources uh, created in the lesson, uh, the when the folder of the lessons page is created in the resources, when it's not. So when the page 
title is changed is the title of the folder changes in the resources uh, is getting to the point that I lost count I just cannot follow that uh, so if you make a page and copy it to somewhere else does the link changes in the resource I haven't done research but uh, it seems like it's very chaotic there uh, so what I usually recommend is that you create uh, sorry, you upload all your resources to the um, resources tool before you do any linking. Uh, and then you go to lessons and link directly to the resources folder. Do not upload directly in the lessons. So that makes the organization a little bit better. Yeah. That's my recommendation. We actually do things um, the opposite way. Most of our instructors will upload um, directly from lessons, but since we normally have everything organized just in subpages for each week, um, there normally ends up being just 16 folders created. And normally items don't change whether they're part of week one um, when things get changed. So we have not had too much problems with the resources getting out of control crazy. But I think it just might be you know, how the course is organized and how many files you have going on. And I think that's one of the strengths of uh, Malete is the organizational structure. I mean, I know that that, you know, speaking for our faculty and probably the e-learning staff that are on the call, um, it, it, you know, the organization and structure of it is very sound in the way you step through, um, you know, a, a module in, in Malete is, um, is, is, is very strong organizationally. And so what we're trying to come to terms with is um, how are we able to do what we did in Malete similarly in lessons uh, in terms of the structure and the layout of uh, in terms of um, course design. Uh, so what uh, you said, uh, you tried this approach, I recommend it, and it's hard to be super organized in advance and also moving resources into new folders break links. Yes, I totally agree with you. Um, I think that's the same when we use Maleti and the linking the documents from the resources to the Maleti tool. So faculty are used to it. So if I keep saying that, it will be just like when you use Maleti. You know, you have to upload everything to the resources. Um, and do not move them too often or not at all and the links will remain intact so I have yet to see uh, how they respond to that when they use lessons um, so I hope uh, they know better organization by now they've been using Melody for several years I'm just reading there's a lot of um chatting going on here. Uh, Corey said that the links, um, she's asserting as well, that the links break when you move items. Um, and that if you have a folder created prior to building a lesson, if you upload it into the lesson, it creates another new folder with the name of that page. So that, I mean, you could end up with, uh, I, I guess then that's how you end up with what, what Beth said, the unwieldy structure where it just keeps creating new folders. Yes, um, we didn't continue testing today and working with a faculty member, but um, in creating, um, you know, I was trying to show her both ways because she, you know, of course had concern. Well, what if I want to add something in the middle? Do I now have to take all these extra steps? Do I have to front load to resources first, which I did recommend. Um, however, she tried uploading directly into the lessons tool and that did create another folder. So she ended up with two folders with the same name one that she had created prior and one that was created um, automatically by lessons. So it seems like the best practice here is, you know, regardless of which approach you take, whether importing into lessons or creating the structure in advance and resources, you need to pick one and, and stick with it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a really confusing folder structure. 
One or the other, yes. Um, we then moved something between folders, and the good news is, I know someone mentioned about links breaking. Um, it did say next to that link, although it maintained it in her lesson, so she could swap out the file. It did say um, after it, I think it was in an almost reddish orange font with little asterisks next to it, it said deleted. Even though it wasn't deleted, it was just no longer in that folder, so the link was broken. Yeah, another issue is that uh, even though it's a it's a file, if it's not a file in the resources, you um, link to our external resources. That's what we usually do. For example, you find an article in New York Times, you want to link on the page so that student can do it. So it's an external URL, or it's a YouTube video you embed on the page. It will create extra set of folders in the resources with the same page title. So what, what do you have to do? You have to um, set the links in the resource folder prior. Uh, it's just getting very confusing. I'm just reading over on the side. It looks like there, obviously there's an interest in figuring out with, um, which of these uh, links in the resources area are not referenced and or broken. Um, I guess, you know, maybe this is since Matt is on the call, Matt, I could ask you this. I know that there's tools out in the marketplace that allow you to check or scroll through for, for dead links. Do you know if anyone's ever tried using uh, one of those tools inside Sakai to check for um, dead or broken links? I don't think any of those public tools would work because you'd have to have be authenticated in. It, it, those are usually just for checking, like, public-facing websites that it could crawl through. Yeah. So it, I think people on the list have asked about it, and there are, like, there's libraries that can be used to do that. So you could like write a Sakai tool to be, you know, to check it, but no, that's a really big project. Okay, so, thank you. Uh, all these all these are ideas, like you could have, you know, every time you, do, you remove a, a resource, it, 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 Sakai has an event internally, and, you know, lessons could listen for those events and, you know, and fix up the links in, in HTML's content. But you know, someone would have to write you know the functionality to do that. So it's all just it's a all that's you know a couple of days of work on every every idea like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they're moderate estimates. So yeah, it, it doesn't do that stuff, but it, you know, it's all it's all possible. It's just um, I don't I don't know of any easy way to do it. Okay. I'm just looking through these other comments here to see if there's anything else worth um, mentioning to the group. Oh, here, here's one. Um, where is it? Uh, about freezing the new development. Where was that? Um, yeah, so I guess what are the risks? Let, let, let's talk about for a minute, um, I guess, the risks associated with continuing to use M Malete, um, I, I mean, I think that, that actually came up in some of the feedback I received um, uh, through the Google form was that some people were interested in, in discussing that, um, you know, and continuing to use Malete. What are the risks other than the obvious one, the obvious ones we already pointed out with um, etudes not supporting it? Um, you know, are there any other things that we have not mentioned? Any reasons that we would need to move from Malete? Um, any other good reasons not to move? From Malete? Uh, we have to face out Malete because simply because Malete is not going to be in a community release uh, instance of the Sakai. Uh, we just don't have the technical abilities to put it in there so that. Uh, the faculty can still have access to it, so we have to face it out. Um, does Longside have any solutions? Does anybody know about that? I, I, I spoke to, I mean, I'll, I, I, Matt, you can um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'll, I, I spoke to Sam Ottenhoff about this at the Sakai conference in June, and, you know, I mean, he was urging us, you know, prudently to to consider our migration plans to lessons. Um, you know, I guess there's, with it being unsupported, you know, there's, I guess, the future of some type of inherent security risk. Um, you know, just the risk of it not being uh, 
supported by the community, the risk of it not looking good in, Mor in, in Morpheus and in future releases of Sakai. Uh, you know, those are a couple of things he pointed out. Now, I mean, Bones, I did indicate they would, you know, try to work with us if we if we needed to um, continue to use it for some reason, you know, but their, their strong preference was for us to, and, and I guess all their customers at some point to, to, to you know, to migrate. Yeah, we, we do, you know, we'll try to do minor work if people need to keep using it. But, you know, sometimes it, that may mean that, you know, you can't upgrade it. You know, if you, when, when 11 comes out, if stuff just, if we get to the point where it's going to take, you know, 50 hours or 100 hours or whatever, a large amount of time to fix this stuff, and we'll just be, you know, we can't, we, maybe we can't support it because it, it isn't in the community and there aren't that many people using it. And we really don't have access to all the code and everything for this stuff so it's um it becomes difficult unless you know someone steps up and is like oh we'll give you we'll pay you to fix everything possible in the late day then you know that's a different story but um you know as far as as it is that's uh it kind of really just it gets whoever it gets the community that supports it thank you so it looks like there's a little bit of a uh, dialogue going on in the chat uh, where mm -hmm. people are agreeing that Lessons is the much better tool. At least there's a few people here that are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lessons is getting active, new constant development from from Rutgers and from you know other various people in the community. So that that's where the future is. So. There's, there's really is no future in and that's why we really don't want to put too much time into it either. Even if someone says, you know, we want you to put all the time you can into it, it's something that we may want to decline working on just because it's a kind of a waste of time. <laughs> okay, so reading through these here. But yeah, it should still keep working for a while, but yeah, you never know if there's going to be a major security thing that, that pops up or, um, I don't know. Well, I, I, can say I came yeah. to the Sakai conference uh, a, a little bit refreshed because I saw that there was a lot of open dialogue, um, you know, the, from the Lessons Enhancement Project to even listening to um, a few of the faculty and, and uh, instructional designers that were there talking about different strategies strategies they employed um, when using lessons. Um, and then there's been a lot in the um, in the users listserv going back and forth about. I know there's the column structure people have been talking about recently and some other things. So I, I think that gets us here at UB you know a little bit excited to see that people are actively talking about um, you know continuing to improve the lessons tool and build on what it's already a, a pretty strong core. All right, uh, Saul will ask a very good question. I'm going to read this aloud. Um, I hope um, a few people can chime in on this. Um, how are your support teams handling the move from Malete to Lessons, and how are users responding? Oh, well, not everyone at once. Um, hi, this is Maris again. We just started. We don't know how the users are going to respond. But anyway, this is what we plan to do. Um, so first of all, we modified the uh, start page of the lessons. You know, when you first go to the lesson, you can see all the tutorials, right? Uh, so we modify it. We put our migration timeline there. We had uh, created several videos we put there. We also have screenshots of the sample lessons page. Uh, so this is the first thing they see. And then if they try to use Maleti, um, we put the um, announcement there, black background, red letter, so it's warning. So Maleti is facing out, please use lessons. And then uh, we have uh, workshops and we have open labs and also can set up one-on-one one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions to discuss how they want to change it. So I personally have talked to a couple of faculties. Um, they've been responding well, and I show them how to 
put the text and the links to documents in lessons and embed videos. Um, so they've been responding well. I don't know if there are any other difficult cases coming up, but uh, this is what we've been doing. This is Corey, also from Marist, if I, don't, if I might add on. Um, in my experience, the buy-in has been fantastic with those that I've worked with directly. You know, obviously, Louisa and I bump heads with different faculty every now and then. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, I did work with someone today, and just the design principle behind the lessons alone, uh, you know, raised eyebrows, and she thought it was fantastic. Um, I think the biggest complaint I personally have heard was the work between the two as um, – the other, other than copy and paste, it's it's really just pulling teeth. It's a little, it's rough. Um, so some are hesitant with the work involved, but I've found that I've really been able to sell it almost as, yeah, but look what look at what it'll look like after. Um, and that's really, you know, I've kind of cheerled about. I'm a little cheerleader about what it looks like in the the end product. And now for those, um, for Louisa, those. Uh, instructions and all the uh, the video tutorial and stuff that you provide, did you, you just put that in a, in, in a master template that you're using when you deploy all new lessons, um, lessons to all your new course sites? Uh, yes, that's, that's one place. We also put on our FAQ pages. We also hand out our best practice uh, booklets with all the instructions. Uh, we try to distribute them as much as possible. But if you guys want to look, here's a link. Uh, how can I copy the link here? It seems to be impossible. Hmm. Okay, I don't know how to copy the link here. So, Corey, do you think you can copy the link? I don't know how to copy the link in the big button. Uh, what link would you like? The teach link? Sure. I, I, I tried twice, but I couldn't copy the link here. Okay, hold on a second. Do I have to type it? Andrew asked a very good question. Does anyone use a model course site that faculty can use as their model? Um, have you set up something like a mock course that um, you let other faculty see? Oh, that's great. Okay, thank you, Kari. Uh, we have a sample site. Uh, we use it for demo purposes. Um, we don't know how to add all our 600 faculties in there to see it. Um, but whenever someone is asking about the lessons, we will show the show this demo site. We have several model pages with different formats. Yeah. Um, we also, when the faculty first have the lessons tool, there's a template that has a link to a lot of the documentation that's also in that link that I just provided uh, that links to our instructional documentation as well as our videos, um, as well as screenshots of, you know, fake sites that say across, you know, the top fake course 101 Jane Doe and with just screenshots of what the, the tool has potential to do. Yeah, that one is in iLearn, so I don't don't think we can share it here. You need the login. True, true. Just sharing, you know, that approach. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, so we're at 1.51. We have about nine minutes left. Um, I want to transition to just talking about, um, I guess, possible next steps, maybe breaking up into some, uh, you know, a, a smaller group if anyone is interested in, um, Pursuing some type of those who have not yet migrated, if you're interested in pursuing some type of automation um, for um, migrating uh, content out of Malete into lessons. Uh, one thing I will say um, is that I know that um, internally we've done a little bit of work um, in tweaking, let's say, um, the IMS manifests of, of packages that we export from Malete. And there's some things that we found that we may be able to do with um, some rewriting of um, the contents of the manifest so that it, it makes its way into lessons in a, in a little bit better format. Um, so is there anyone who's, who's um, toyed with this at all, or if there's anyone that's interested in having a further dialogue of, of automating?
Okay. Well, it sounds like a lot of people have um, strategies in place for, um, you know, for doing their uh, course migration. So, um, you know, if, if anyone is interested in um, speaking with me offline about this, we can certainly talk about it. Um, we've engaged Longsite in the past and, and, and may do so again. Um, and, and you know, we're looking for anyone that's interested in, in collaborating on that effort, if, if there would be interest there. Yeah, for the transition, I think we 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 got that pretty close, but you know, it's it's based on a really old version of lessons and a lot of that was rewritten. So, if if that was going to be picked up, that would have to be a a lot of that would have to be redone. So, you know, a, a lot of all that was committed to to version control, and some parts of it were picked up. Some parts of that work were picked up in the other Jiras, but um, the the bulk of it that actually was able to import it, it wasn't. So, because there, there was a, we didn't finish testing on it and it didn't, it didn't get it committed at the time. All right, so we have a, a few yeses over here, uh, Reba Ann and Kwana Yu. And I don't remember where you guys were from, if you told me. All right, Reba Ann from Marist. Yeah, you guys have a lot of courses, so. Okay, um, so what we, what I might do is, is um, schedule a separate, um, maybe schedule a separate conference call with a smaller group and discuss some things. Um, we're going to be doing some internal testing in the next couple weeks, and we may have some things to share. Um, and we're very interested in um, talking through those more technical ideas with others who are interested in the um, looking at the IMS um, manifests and, and, you know, what can be done, what can be um, handled through some um, scripting. Um, on both ends. And here go. Um, Andrew's providing us with a um, an example navigation page down here. And Corey did uh, give us uh, a link to the um, I guess their teaching resource page. Uh, in case anybody interested in modifying the lessons tutorial page, uh, if you uh, right click on the help button, open a new tab, that's the link you can use to modify it. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to um, add or throw out there for the good of the order before we uh, end the call today? All right. Well, um, I guess thank you all for joining today. Um, this was a, um, a good open dialogue, and I hope that um, you made some connections today and, and – um, Wish you the best. And if you have any questions or you want to talk offline with me or um, some of my colleagues, um, shoot me an email either directly. Um, you guys probably have my email from the many listserv things I've been sending out. But if not, I'll put it here in the box below. Um, thanks, everyone, for your time. And uh, I'm going to stop the recording now.